Hello everyone, this is T.G. Shuck, former Chief Meteorologist at WKYT-TV in Lexington. Thank you for your interest in helping the National Weather Service in Louisville by joining the ranks of our Skywarn Storm Spotters. This is the fourth of four required modules to become an official spotter for us. After a short quiz with this module, you will be able to register in the NWS Louisville Spotter Database and receive a Certificate of Completion. There are four modules associated with this basic Skywarn class. You should have already completed the basics of weather warnings, how the weather works, storm spotting. In this module, we'll go over information exchange. Additional supplemental modules will be made available in the future, and you are encouraged to take as many of those as you'd like. This module consists of two main elements, situational awareness, and sending your weather reports to the NWS. Situational awareness simply means paying attention to what's happening around you. It doesn't require a lot of training, skills, or intelligence. It just means that you are aware of your circumstances and because of that can make appropriate decisions if faced with the need to protect yourself. Defensive driving courses incorporate situational awareness as a key element of an everyday activity. Maintaining high situational awareness when severe weather threatens can mean the difference between keeping yourself and your loved ones safe or risking injury or death. A crucial part of staying safe during severe weather is knowing when you are at risk. There are many ways to be alerted when the National Weather Service issues a warning for your area. Sirens, no weather radio, mobile phones, television, and the internet. The most important thing to remember is always have more than one means of receiving a warning. For many people, sirens are synonymous with tornado warnings. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. The National Weather Service does not control any sirens. They are sounded by local officials. And just as there are multiple types of sirens, there are multiple uses of sirens depending on location. Some communities sound sirens for severe thunderstorm warnings in addition to tornado warnings and some use them to alert volunteer firemen to report for duty. Contact your local emergency manager to find out what the policy is in your community for sounding sirens. Regardless of your community's siren policy, there are many things in common about sirens no matter where you live. First of all, sirens are the most basic method of alerting the public. With few exceptions, they can only alert you of a danger. They can't provide you with details or follow-up information. Some sirens are essentially loudspeakers for relaying audio messages, but these are relatively few and far between. Most importantly, sirens are designed for outdoor use. They were never designed to be heard indoors, with windows closed and stereos, TVs, or other entertainment devices playing. Because of the effective range of sirens as only 1 to 5 miles and because they are not located in all locations, especially sparsely populated rural areas, you might not even be in an area served by a siren. Last but not least, keep in mind that sirens are essentially 1940s technology, having remained virtually unchanged since their first use as air raid sirens during World War II. Like sirens, no other radios come in many varieties. Some offer advanced features, while others are very basic. With most of the United States now served by weather radio broadcast, you should have one at home and on the road when you travel to stay up on the latest weather conditions in your area. The most important feature of a no weather radio is its ability to alarm when a warning is issued for your area. In this respect, weather radios are a lot like indoor tornado sirens. Like a smoke alarm which monitors and protects you while your body recharges during sleep, the alarm feature of a weather radio can wake you up in the middle of the night to let you know that severe weather is heading your way. Unlike a smoke alarm though, you can use your NOAA weather radio every day of the year. With just a push of a button, you can always get the latest forecast and current conditions for your area to help you make everyday decisions like whether or not to wear a jacket or to take an umbrella with you on your way out the door. For the most part, no weather radio technology has remained nearly unchanged since the 1970s. While some may see this as a negative, there are benefits to that. 
with proper maintenance, a weather radio manufactured in the 1970s can still work today. The only major technological change to the weather radio program occurred in the mid-1990s with the introduction of Specific Area Message Encoding, or SAME, technology. This feature allows listeners with same capable no weather radios to specify which counties they want to be warned for, effectively shutting off alerts for all other locations. When setting up your weather radio to use same codes, the National Weather Service strongly suggests you include those counties that border yours to the southwest, west, and northwest since most storms move from west to east in our area. With the exception of a few locations in very hilly terrain, nearly all of Kentucky and Indiana is served by no weather radio. Some locations may be covered by more than one transmitter. To program your weather radio properly for your area, visit the Louisville National Weather Service Office's weather radio page on the internet at the link on this slide. This link to this page is also found in the left-hand menu on our webpage at weather.gov slash Louisville. By clicking on your county on this webpage, you'll find all the necessary information to program your weather radio, including which transmitters serve your area, as well as the county names and codes that the NWS suggests you enter into your same capable no weather radio to ensure you receive as much lead time as possible for storms headed your way. It wasn't all that long ago that the only way to make a phone call was to use what we now refer to as landlines. Today, though, not only can a majority of Americans make a call from nearly anywhere with a mobile phone, but they can receive a call or text on that same phone. The most beneficial aspect of mobile phones is the fact that most people keep them nearby nearly continuously. With a text or data plan, these phones can then be used as personal warning devices. There are a number of sources for receiving SMS text messages of weather warnings, including most local TV stations. And even if you don't have a text or data plan for your mobile carrier, you may be able to receive warnings of the most dangerous weather, including tornadoes, flash floods, and blizzards, for free. These are available on most newer cell phones through the Integrated Public Alert and Warning System, or iPaws. This FEMA-run program incorporates information flow from and to a number of dissemination systems, including NOAA Weather Radio and the Commercial Mobile Alert System, to send wireless emergency alerts to CMAS-ready phones in or near a warned area. There are also services that will send a voice call to your phone when a warning is issued for your area. Some of these, like Weather Call and the Weather Channel's Notify system, are on an individual subscription basis, while others, like Code Red's Weather Warning, are available at no individual cost to people whose county or city government has purchased the service for their citizens. Another great thing about cell phones today is that they incorporate the latest cutting-edge technology, including the capability to access the Internet with hundreds, if not thousands, of apps to provide not only warnings, but access the National Weather Service's network of Doppler radars, local forecasts, and even access to the audio of many local no weather radio broadcasts. When weather really becomes dangerous, there is nothing like having your favorite TV meteorologist explain what is happening, when it's happening, and what you should do to stay safe. The area served by the National Weather Service in Louisville intersects with TV coverage areas of five different TV markets. So whether you're watching a television station in Louisville, Lexington, Bowling Green, Evansville or Nashville, you can be certain that the NWS and TV meteorologists work as a team to help keep you safe. When severe weather threatens, it is crucial that you tune into local TV meteorologists. With cable and satellite television, it's now possible to watch meteorologists located thousands of miles away from your home. While this is fine during non-severe weather, these stations may not cover severe weather in your location or may cover so many locations that they can't devote much time to speaking about your county or town. Regardless of which station you watch, you should know that even though TV meteorologists don't issue warnings, nearly all of them are in contact with NWS meteorologists who do via each NWS office's internet chat room. 
Because of this, there may actually be times when local television meteorologists can let you know that the NWS will be issuing or has just issued a warning even before your NOAA weather radio goes off. This can happen when there are several warnings being issued in rapid succession since no weather radios can only broadcast one warning at a time. If a second warning is issued before the first one has completed its initial broadcast, it must wait for the open spot on the broadcast to alert you. Not only can TV meteorologists explain the weather situation and relay National Weather Service warnings to you, they can also relay information that viewers send them to the National Weather Service. This is a crucial part of the warning process as it provides NWS forecasters with the information they need to confirm and calibrate what they are seeing on radar. Like mobile phones, most TV stations are continuously upgrading their equipment as new technology becomes available. Because of this, you can rest assured that your favorite TV weather person will have every resource necessary to help keep you informed during severe weather. Regardless of browser or whether you use a PC, a Mac, a tablet, or a smartphone, weather information is in no short supply on the Internet. However, like everything else on the Internet, you must be very careful of the source from which you obtain your weather information. There is no doubt that there is a surplus of weather information now available on the Internet, including satellite images, computer model forecast, and radar. This information has both educated the general public and helped reduce the number of lives lost to extreme weather. Unfortunately, there are some people who seem to enjoy posting false information during severe weather. Believe it or not, it is not uncommon for Photoshop pictures of tornadoes approaching well-known landmarks to be posted on the Internet during severe weather outbreaks, often when there is a warning in effect, but when no tornado occurs. What really complicates matters is when good people who do want to help others unwittingly relay this bogus information. Avenues in which erroneous or downright fabricated weather information typically spread include Twitter, Facebook, and online blogs. To ensure that you aren't duped by bogus weather reports or warnings, intentionally or unintentionally, you should always look to official websites like weather.gov or your favorite TV station for information that has been verified by trusted meteorologists. Of course, if you're a sky-worn spotter, one of your bookmarks or favorites should always be the National Weather Service website, weather.gov. From there, you can access the local web page maintained by each local NWS office, as well as the pages for radar, satellite, river forecast, etc. Because there is so much information available on NWS web pages, the Kentucky offices of the NWS developed an emergency manager briefing page to serve as a one-stop shop for maintaining good weather situation awareness on a daily basis. Clicking anywhere on this map opens a new page for your area that displays or provides links to three main areas. Local forecast information, hazardous weather outlooks for up to a week in advance, and the latest observations, analysis, radar, and storm reports. Click on these three tabs at the top of the pages pulls up the latest information for these categories. While the site is called the Kentucky Emergency Manager's Briefing Page, it's open for anyone to access and includes information for nearby counties for all neighboring states adjacent to the Commonwealth. Another valuable website to monitor for the latest local weather conditions is the Kentucky Mesonet. The Kentucky Mesonet is a network of automated weather and climate monitoring stations developed by the Kentucky Climate Center at Western Kentucky University to serve diverse needs and communities across the state. With more than 60 high-quality weather stations covering the entire state, meteorologists use the Mesonet to track storms as they race across the Commonwealth. With several of the sites located close to the Ohio River, adjacent sections of Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio benefit from these observations as well. Another great site to monitor and one that you can contribute to is COCORAS, the Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network. This volunteer network, which started in Colorado after a deadly flood in 1997, is now active in all 50 states. In Indiana, more than 1,800 volunteers have signed up, and in Kentucky, over 500 people are registered. 
The rainfall reports provided by Coco Ross observers are extremely valuable to all meteorologists, especially when rainfall totals can vary greatly within even a single county. Coco Ross reports are not only used to help forecasters make decisions on flood and flash flood watches and warnings, but hydrologists in the nation's river forecast centers input the data in their river modules to help provide long-term river and lake forecasts. The dense network of Coco Ross reports, along with data from the NWS Cooperative Observers, the Kentucky Mesonet, and Airport Observations all contribute to the rainfall maps that are posted on the NWS webpage each morning after precipitation has fallen. You've seen how to increase your situational awareness during severe weather. Now we'll look at how you can help increase situation awareness of the National Weather Service meteorologists whose mission is to protect your life and property by the issuance of timely and accurate forecasts and warnings. With today's wireless technology, there are a number of ways to get your reports to the National Weather Service. One tried and true way is to use the telephone. In fact, for the most critical information, like reporting a tornado, we prefer you to call us so that if we need to ask you any questions, we can do so immediately. The number on the bottom of this slide, 800-292-5588, is our 24-7 toll-free Skywarn spotter line. Program it into your phone now so that you'll always have it when you need it. But please, only call this unlisted number to report severe weather and only if it is safe to do so. For all other purposes, contact us via the phone number listed at the bottom of the NWS Louisville web page. When you call the National Weather Service, your report should follow this format. First, tell us your name and phone number. This is when we call you back for more information if necessary. Then provide us with where you are, which direction you're looking, what you see or saw, and when you saw it. Okay, I'm about five miles southeast of Deweese. I'm looking to my west-northwest, well-developed tornado on the ground right now. Been on the ground for about two minutes. I couldn't find your number. Okay, it's still on the ground. You bet. Bye. In this video, the spotter told us where he was, about five miles southeast of Deweese, which direction he was looking, to the west-northwest, what he saw, a well-developed tornado on the ground, and when he saw it. Right now, it's been on the ground for about two minutes. For the less time-critical information, a great way to send your reports to the National Weather Service is through social media. Like us on Facebook and post your information there or follow us on Twitter at NWS Louisville. When posting on Twitter, be sure to identify where you're sending your report from, at a minimum, the county and state. Also use one or more of the following hashtags. Hashtag KYWX, hashtag INWX, hashtag LMK Spotter. If you can include a photo or even better, a short video clip with your Facebook or Twitter post, that helps us even more. The old adage that a picture is worth a thousand words is really true, especially when you're limited to 140 text characters. Another way to post your weather observation for the world to see is through MPing Project, Meteorological Phenomenon Identification Near the Ground. This program, based out of NOAA's National Severe Storms Laboratory and the University of Oklahoma, enables you to send geocode reports from your Apple or Android smartphone to a server that plots your report on a map of the U.S. You can report rain, snow, hail, wind damage, tornadoes, flood, landslide, and reduced visibility. When reporting hail, wind damage, and flooding, you can even report the size or severity of the phenomenon. As mentioned earlier, though, if at all possible for tornadoes, we'd prefer you to call the National Weather Service in Louisville on our spotter number, 800-292-5588. Lastly, you can always email us your reports, including multiple photos and or videos. Send them to lmk.ops at noaa.gov. When emailing us, please remember to include your name, location, phone number, in addition to where and when the photos or videos were taken. Let's review the key points of this module. 
Maintaining high situation awareness during times of potential severe weather is crucial to keeping yourself and your loved ones safe. There are many ways to receive warnings, which is just part of situation awareness. Always make sure you have more than one way to receive a severe weather warning. When searching out weather information on the web, use trusted sources, including the National Weather Service or your favorite local television station. Be wary of information posted on social media sites like Facebook or Twitter unless it originates from or has been confirmed by the National Weather Service or another trusted meteorologist. When relaying a report to the National Weather Service, always include where you are, which direction you are looking if reporting something distant, what you see or saw, and when you see it. Thank you for your interest in serving the National Weather Service and your fellow citizens.